<sighs> hey, what's going on, folks? Hope you're having a good day. There are there, there's a lot of people I see on Instagram, for example, and they post really, really crazy stuff. And then it's like two pictures. It's like a swipe through. It's like one picture of something amazing. And then the next picture is just code. And they're like, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they write a bunch of Cody things in the description. And I'm just like, dude, what is happening? What are you doing? Because this looks amazing, what you have here. But I'm not writing code. I'm not a computer software engineer. <laughs> well, that's what I used to think until now. I, I DM this dude on Instagram and I was like, so what are you doing? You make some really awesome stuff and I would like to at least know how you do it and then maybe consider maybe giving it a shot. And he was like, he, he sent me a bunch of links and, and I'll put I'll put these links in the description. There's this one video that I really, really recommend watching about generative art. And he's like, yeah, it's called generative art. It's just art made with code. So so the goal for, for me for this video is, look, I don't know almost anything but you know in the past couple of days i've learned some things once you get going and you just take that initial first step and kind of overcome the confusion it's not that scary i don't think it's that scary okay so i made this program the other day let me just copy it over here so so what it does is maybe you've heard of the artist Piet Mondrian, you know, he made paintings that kind of look like this. I'm sure he would be offended. So what this code does is it generates a canvas of a set size. And within that canvas, there are four rectangles with a random height, a random width, and random color out of this color palette that I gave it. And so every time you hit play, every time I run this code, it spits out something different, which is kind of cool. I mean, this one's all blue, you know, it, it, who knows what could happen. Now this is just obviously one very, very specific example of what you can do, but this was my idea just because I figured it would be kind of simple and yeah, I mean, it's, it's not super complicated. So I'm gonna just go through and remake it or remake some of it. The first thing we need is a canvas. So I'm gonna type size and then you can put whatever numbers you want. In my case, I, w I wanted the, the canvas to be 500 by 500. So now we have this canvas. If I hit play, it's just empty. So that's okay. But now we want to put some rectangles in it. For rectangle, you just write rect, and then you got to, you got to put in four numbers. The first two numbers are the position, x and y. Uh, so I'm just gonna put zero, zero. The second two numbers are how big the thing is, width and height, how big the rectangle is. So, I mean, we can put, for example, 69, 69, uh, close out that parentheses, and now when we hit play, we get this rectangle that is 69 by 69. And obviously it's gonna be 69 every single time because there's no, there's no randomness to it. I'm telling it exactly. You are located at zero, zero and you are 69 by 69 in size. Here's where it gets interesting. Variables. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a float. Now, to be honest, I'm still new to all this. I know that in this specific scenario, I need a float, but there are other kinds of variables for other purposes. Mm, I don't really know. So then what you put is random, and then you put a minimum value and a maximum value. So let's just say anywhere between zero and 500. So we can replace these 69s with A. So now the, the, the width of this rectangle is A. It can be anything from zero to 500. The height is always gonna be 69, but the width is now this random variable. So when we hit play, okay, we get this long rectangle. Sometimes it's gonna be even longer. Sometimes it's gonna be real skinny. So now we have this random element. Now we're sort of in the world of generative art a little bit. We can try to make this look a little bit nicer. I can add a fill to this rectangle and I can make it red. Now I just wrote 255 comma zero comma zero. What the hell does that mean? Well, if you know the RGB color system, uh, R is red, G is green and B is blue. So when you put something with color, you give it three numbers the R value, the G value, and the B value. And in this case, since I want it to be red, totally red, you just put red up to the maximum, which is 255. I just want the background to be white. So I'm gonna put 255 comma 255 comma 255. And that's the crazy thing, is if you have red, green, and blue all the way to the maximum, it's just white. Dude, colors, they're kind of magical, but that's how it works. So now if we hit play, we have our random rectangle and the the background is white. Okay, cool, 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 cool. 
So now let's throw in another random variable. I'm gonna just copy and paste that and now we'll swap this out for B. So now we have two random variables, A and B. And in our rectangle, I'm gonna get rid of this other 69 and replace it with B. So what we have is a rectangle that's always gonna start at zero, zero, which is like the, the top left corner, but the height is random and the width is random. So every time we hit play, it's gonna be a different rectangle or square kind of thing. Now what I want, and this is where I would bust out the pen and paper because I was trying to figure this out in my head and it's pretty confusing. So basically we have this canvas and then we have our red square, but now I wanna start thinking about this other rectangle that we can just make blue for now. So basically we have to make a function for this rectangle. And in order to do that, we need to know where it is and how big it is. Okay, doesn't sound too complicated. Now we know that this uh, length is A and that this height is B. So it's pretty obvious that this blue rectangle is also, you know, B tall. But how wide is it? How wide? So what I decided, and this was just like a personal preference choice, was that this remaining distance, like what, whatever space that the, the red square doesn't occupy, whatever's left, just slice it right down the middle and make half of it blue and half of it white. That way I'll, I'll always have this nice gap in between the red and the blue. So that's what I wanted. Now how the hell do we do this? Well, first of all, the astute observer would know that this distance right here is actually 500 minus A, right? It's not some other variable because the whole canvas is 500 and this is A. So whatever's left is 500 minus A. So that means that the width of this blue rectangle is actually 500 minus A divided by two. Ooh. So I just wanted to do that just to kind of show that it, it's so much easier to just write this down on a piece of paper, draw it out, and then everything makes more sense. Okay, so now I just filled in this rectangle with the, the math that we just figured out. And if I hit play, you'll see that it works. We have, you know, this white gap area that's the same size as the blue square, and it works pretty well. So this is the basic idea. I could go through the rest of the code, but I think this kind of gets the point across. That is my first adventure into generative art and trying to learn how to code. Hopefully this doesn't make it just more confusing and intimidating than it already was. Hopefully this makes you think, oh dude, I can do this. Anybody can do this. My advice as a total beginner, download processing, check out the links that I put in the description and just find people's code online, mess with it, it's really fun. Ah. All right, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, leave a like, leave a comment. All right, peace be with you and with your spirit. <laughs>